Chapter 39 It's done, I said, taking a seat next to Johnny A. I lay the sheathed sword and wand down on the shiny bar. I'd washed off the blood myself at the marble kitchen sink at Bowminster's place, ready to scoot through the back door if I heard anyone approach. My pockets were loaded with bucks and a couple vials of vitality juice. I would have searched for more, but I'd been out of pockets in time. Johnny gave an approving nod and gestured for the bartender to bounce along and get me a drink. She poured some top-shelf whiskey, then slid the glass next to the weapons without so much as a blink. Her red lips curled as she gave me a slow look up and down. I wasn't in the mood to flirt, but I slid a tip across the bar. I hear Lyle swinging from his balcony. Poor guy. Johnny lifted his glass. We drank. I'll be honest. Freddy here didn't think we'd see you again. He paused to perform an appraising gaze, then offered his hand. Good job. Quest updated. A gang of your own. Bonus objective complete. You killed the goblin chief, Lyle Bowminster, then reported to Johnny A. Objective rewards, 500 bucks, 500 XP. You have earned respect. Respect with the Antonelli family, plus five. Since you've gained five respect with the Antonellis, you are awarded one loyalty. Antonelli family loyalty, one. Respect with Johnny A, plus five. Since you've gained five respect with Johnny Antonelli, you are awarded one loyalty. Johnny Antonelli's loyalty, one. Respect with Freddy plus two. Updated quest objectives. Objective one, take out Goblin Chief Lyle Bowminster. Objective two, form a gang. Huh, well, fuck Freddy anyhow. At least I knew how he felt about me, kind of. In the real world, he could have hidden the way he felt. There was that. With the extra XP I'd banked, I was nearly halfway to the next level. Gotta like that. I still had to get back to Tansy for the next part of my quest to be fulfilled. There was something I wanted to do first. Could I see Galore before I go? I just wanted to thank her for the cooperation. I finished my drink. That whiskey sure was nice, I had to admit. Smoky and deep, warming my insides. Shame to gulp it back. Why the hell not? You took out our competition and we're in the garbage collection biz now. Go for it. She's in the back room. Fuck her if you want. No skin off my ass. Consider this your free pass. He laughed and saluted me again as I collected up my loot. Sure enough, a token for my free time with Galore appeared in the corner of my HUD. I dismissed it and headed into the back room. Galore wasn't alone in the lounge. She and another girl were entertaining a guy on the sofa, both bare-breasted and pouring champagne into his mouth. I cocked my head at them, and Galore straightened. She handed the bottle to the redhead. How about you two go find a new nest, huh? I got something to deal with here. Her tone was sweet enough, but her eyes had gone flinty. The redhead shot me an inscrutable look followed by a smug smile. I'd bet she was about to scoop the entire fee on that one now, and Kitty would be pissed. She led the guy out by his tie, prancing on her stilettos and swinging the champagne bottle by the neck. Galore slid over next to me, all naked boobs and smoky green eyes and hair touching. Her tail curled over me, and I was surprised to find it incredibly soft and a little alluring, but I shoved it off my legs. Her lips spread into a slow, wide smile. You here to celebrate? Something told me she was thrilled to be free of that ugly goblin. Cover up. I'm not here for that. You could have it, though. You earned it. She purred, tail twining around my lower leg. She held up the token Johnny had transferred to me as if by magic. Her toes tried to get under my pants leg, but I slid over. Maybe another time. I assume those tokens don't expire. I didn't have any designs on using it, but there was business. She rolled her shoulder, pulling up the top of her dress and settling the straps in place. Okay, then. She might not, when she heard what I had to say. Fact was, I'd relived her of a duty she didn't enjoy. Her little spy game for the Antonellis was over, and that had to come as some kind of relief. Usually, I might have walked into the sunset and let it all lie. But I had a mission, and I was damned determined to complete it. My life was in constant peril. And if I wanted to be free again before I died, well, at least I limited my unbecoming behavior to the virtual world. The way I see it, your life just got a lot better. Her torso slid to one side and she drew her head back. Oh, here comes the catch. 
You think you did me some huge favor, right? That I owe you something? Token isn't enough? Her ears twitched back resentfully, flushing hot pink at the tips. I might need a favor in the future, but don't have the impression this is a one-way street. I helped you today. If you help me in the future when I come calling, then I'll help you the next time. I like how you operate. You were cool under pressure, the kind of friend I wouldn't mind having. Those slit eyes really did belong on a cat. Unnerving. I guess it depends on the favor. Don't worry, I'll keep it fair and in exchange. I'll ditch the token. She let out a long-suffering sigh and folded her arms protectively around herself. Her head shook side to side. Fine. She waved a dismissive hand. I'm so glad I never have to touch that louse again. Future favor to be specified whenever you decide. Done. Your negotiation skill has reached rank three. You have gained plus one respect with Kitty Galore. A contract appeared on the cocktail table. We each read it over and agreed, and then a little icon appeared in my contract archive. I was accumulating quite the library. Pleasure doing business, Kitty. Miss Galore, she hissed. Chapter 40 I caught the tram towed by lumbering dark beasts from the strip club. I rode it around the northern swing of its route, then south until it reached the cross street where a short trot brought me to the bluebell. The cafe was painted in the sun's late-day glow, giving it a warm, inviting appeal, almost like coming home. The mentor was at his shoeshine stand, and everything felt like it was finally starting to fall into place. Tansy gave an apprehensive look at my scratched face and hurried to pour me coffee, calling out an order for comforting breakfast food through the window. You okay? I was starting to wonder when you didn't show up for so long. It was only a couple days. Besides, it was worth it. I fixed up my coffee, then took a big gulp as she gave me a lingering look, lip pinched between her teeth. And? She finally prompted. It's done. The bluebell is free and clear. Bowminster is dead. Antonelli's taking over, but he promised you'd never have to pay. You're covered. I shared a copy of the contract. This proves it. Tansy slapped both hands over her mouth, eyes huge and welling with tears. Oh my God! She vaulted the counter, threw her arms around me, then pressed a joyous kiss to my cheek. As she backed away, she laughed and tucked her hands behind her, tears flowing freely until she palmed them away. Sorry, sorry, I just, I have to tell Daddy. Hang on. She disappeared into the kitchen. A few moments later, whoops and clatters echoed through the cafe. Mr. Bluebell stuck his head through the window to shout his thanks. Then he apparently reconsidered and came barging through the swinging kitchen door to grasp my hand in both of his, shaking it wildly. I can never thank you enough. He palmed the back of my head and pressed a kiss to my forehead. Stay in the spare room as long as you need. You're family now. You have gained plus ten respect with Mr. Bluebell, plus two loyalty with Mr. Bluebell. Tansy stood in the kitchen doorway, beaming, staring at us, or at me. Warmth spread in my chest to see their happiness. That warmth spread in my belly when she delivered a huge platter of half the breakfast menu. It had been a long time since I'd seen so much food at once. I snatched the cloth draped over her shoulder before she could retreat to the kitchen. Grab a coffee and sit with me. We have planning to do. She did, sliding onto the stool beside me, waving over the older woman I'd seen waiting tables before. Auntie, this is Wren. Her voice dropped to a stage whisper. He freed us of that asshole, Bowminster. Tansy kissed my cheek again. No. The woman's shock turned into a beaming smile. That old goblin fuck? He's gone? Gone, I confirmed. The Antonellis are taking over his operations and the bluebell is off limits. No more protection fees. She grabbed me by the cheeks and pressed a wet kiss to my mouth. Squealing was involved. Good, good boy, I like this wren. Auntie! Tansy laughed, shooing her away. I waited until her back was turned before wiping my face on my sleeve. Tansy cradled her mug in both quivering hands, her face glowing. Okay, open a party tab and invite me. I did as ordered, and she joined my party. Tansy Bluebell has offered to join your gang. You are not currently in a gang. Would you like to form one now? I selected yes. Public gangs allow members to join without restriction. 
Gang logos are seen on gang members' info plates. Private gangs allow members to conceal their membership. Which kind of gang would you like to create? I next selected private, declined to name it yet, then assigned Tansy the rank of first lieutenant, enforcer. Congratulations, you have completed the quest. A gang of your own. Objective 2. Form a gang. Complete. Reward. 250 bucks. Tansy Bluebell has joined your gang. You have earned 13 respect with Tansy Bluebell. Tansy Bluebell's loyalty. 3. You have formed a gang. Bonus. 100 XP. All right, boss. What's next? The question caught me by surprise. Her enthusiasm was unmistakable. But an idea dawned at just the right moment. Now that I had a true ally, someone to help me along in the world and achieve my goals, it only made sense to include her in the whole shebang. I smiled in what was probably an understated way for what I was proposing. How would you like to bring down a criminal enterprise in River City? Chapter 41 Although I'd unlocked the auction house and M.O. at level 5 while gallivanting around the forest in search of hogs, I'd returned to the Bluebell exhausted, entered my first underground fight, then started in with the Bowminster quest. So my first real opportunity to visit one of the glowing kiosks didn't come until I'd completed my Bowminster mission. Tansy led me to one two blocks from the Blue Bell and informed me there were two in the district. A blue glow surrounded the metal kiosk, and its high-tech appeal contrasted the city's simpler surroundings, like the hand-lit street lamps. I brought up the interface, thinking I'd probably have to pore over loads of information to get what I wanted. But I was pleasantly surprised when my HUD formed a blue-framed, flashing pane with a description of just how easy it was. Welcome to the Mafioso Online Auction House. Here you can search River City for weapons, gear, crafting recipes, ingredients, and much more with a simple thought. Need a scroll of brawn? Just think, scroll of brawn. It couldn't be easier to search for what you need. At level 20, you'll be able to search the auction house worldwide. All items delivered through the auction house system will be sent to your virtual mailbox. Items will be held for 90 days before being deleted. A 5% convenience fee is charged to the seller for all transactions. Okay. I set a gentle hand on Tansy's shoulder. I guess we'll start by putting in the last names of the major families to find out who is selling what. What is it you're trying to find? How did I explain to a River City NPC? Mentions of the outside world were strict no-nos, but River City was the most authentic place I'd experienced in any virtual setting, and if it was so much like the real world, then Tansy would understand mafia influence and rackets. I'm trying to find evidence of money laundering. She tilted her head to one side, her bottom lip inflating then twisting to one side in a curious expression. Money laundering? Hmm, I'm not sure how you'd recognize it. I nodded. Yeah, that's the main problem. Fishing it out. I rewound my time in M.O., and the first recollection to spring to mind was my first death, when I was a female halfling at the hands of the Blood Talons gang, and how I'd been sent right into their waiting, weapon-wielding hands by a member of the Antonelli family. If the gang was comprised of players, as evidenced by their infinity tattoos, they could be acting as conduits between the Rossies on the outside and the Antonellis on the inside. Is there a way to search by gang membership? Depends on whether they're private. Bells rang inside my head. The Talons were not private. In fact, I'd had little persistent thoughts about how they'd likely chosen to be a public gang as a form of intimidation. A great big don't fuck with us message. If they were working with the Antonellis, as I suspected by their presence in the crime family's territory, my eyebrows raised. When we met at the cafe the first time, you mentioned a possible connection between that Joe guy, the one linked to the Antonellis, and the Blood Talons, right? She nodded. The Antonellis are known to have their hands in the pixie dust trade. The Talons distribute that blight on society. Ding. I'd witnessed for myself how the Talons got high on the shit in the warehouse where I'd taken revenge on them. That thought caused me to throw head checks over both shoulders. If they logged in to get high like so many other players, they'd need a supply of in-game cash to fund their hobby. But at such low levels in River City, their cash supply would be limited. Good reason to work with the Antonellis if they dabbled in the drug racket. There might be talons of higher level throughout the world. 
but the ones in River City weren't there to advance in-game. The way they'd attacked me on the street without worry of reprisals from the authorities, or me, indicated two things. First, they were connected. One didn't fuck around in someone else's territory without permission. Secondly, they weren't noobs. They knew what they were doing. I suspected they'd just rather get high than advance and jump on a ship to the next port. Since the addiction didn't carry into the outside world, the money must have. That's it, I muttered. If they're not trying to advance, and if they're not fueling an addiction, they're cashing in. In deference to the rules about discussing the outside world, I ceased my verbal musings and left the rest to resonate in my head. Which means they're in cahoots with someone in the outside world. That's the only way they'd make it profitable. It'd be a good gig for the Talons. The Rossies would need to funnel money through the game to clean it. Vance was a low-level in-game, as evidenced by his appearance with NPC bodyguards when he'd located me. So, they could use the Talons, who dominated by numbers in River City, to act as a go-between with the in-game NPC crime families. Although it was all starting to come together, one niggling thought stood out. Javier Jinx wasn't human. He was an elf. How did the pixie hunter who harvested the tiny being's dust fit into the scheme? Was it like the real world, where the drug trade crossed social boundaries? Probably. Clench your jaw any harder and you're going to impact your molars. My head whipped around at Tansy's unexpected voice. Yeah, I'm working through something. Do they sell dust on the auction house? She nodded. No, they sell everything else, though. Could I get a high-level weapon or rare weapon? She shook her head. You could get one, but all transactions are monitored by the authorities. If what you buy is illegal somewhere, someone will know about it. I guess you could get away with it if you have connections to the cops, but you don't. She gave a sideways smile. Hell, I suspect I'm your lone connection in the city. It was sad how true that was. But is it? One delivery for the Antonellis had bought me an invitation to return. Could I somehow pick up where I left off as a male halfling? I stowed the thought for later. Is dust legal? She shook her head. Heavens no, that stuff will get you banished from the city. An interesting penalty. They don't imprison people? I knew that kind of setup wouldn't likely work in a game world, but I had to ask. For low-level offenses, sure, but for higher-level crimes like murder or trafficking in dust, they'll try you, give you fifty lashes, then stick you on a boat to the wilderness somewhere. Where I'd level up and come back with a vengeance, were I hardcore. I chuckled. How do I search by gang? She eyed me suspiciously, probably since I didn't share the reason for my low laughter, but she just shrugged. You don't. Search for the item, then you can scroll through the listings. The gang icon will appear on the left. I sent a search for pixie dust from my thoughts to the AI monitoring them. I spoke while I scanned the multicolored icons in the left column. Spend a lot of time on here? She shook her head. Prices are too inflated. I sell when I have a surplus of an ingredient, usually low-level stuff, but I'll never get rich from it. Right. It made sense. Lower-level items in which advanced players had no interest would evade the price inflation. Simple supply and demand. She shrugged. When I get my alchemy skill ranked up, assuming I ever do, I can earn more. I thought about the tome stolen from Tansy's mother. Although I'd have loved to recover it, the situation hadn't allowed for leaving Bowminster alive. On the bright side, I'd earned some respect from the Antonellis and the Bluebells. If my search proved out, maybe I'd find a way to go back to the Antonelli restaurant where I'd done my first delivery as a halfling woman and see if I could pick up where I left off. My change in identity was definitely a deterrent, but I'd come up with something. Although the value of money still wasn't my strong suit, I'd intuited some level of coherence via my rewards and prices for things around the city. The unmistakable talon icon popped up next to a listing for a piece of shit wand for 900 bucks. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. Why charge so much if you're trying to move it? It was the lone talon listing. I was perplexed. But the virtual universe sent a thought through my mind, and I focused on the seller's name. Johnson. How creative. A little icon on the right popped up some italicized text when I gave it my attention. 
other auctions from this seller. I focused there, then a listing that filled three pages popped up. Figuring I must have messed up on the filtering somehow, I gaped at the rows of weapons and gear in various colors, most purple. The descriptions of items in that color indicated they were epic in quality. But the prices didn't fluctuate much. The gear levels started at 30, and most were much higher than that. If players bolted from River City at level 20, what sense did it make to sell high-level gear there? I folded my arms across my chest, then stared. Tansy must have read my confusion. Can I help? I nodded. What could it hurt? Why would a level 9 be selling level 30 equipment of epic quality in River City? She shrugged. How would I know? She squinted at the kiosk, then her eyes darted around. What's the listing? I read off the name of the item. I see, she said after a moment scanning. This guy's selling all kinds of stuff, huh? Man, what I'd give to get my hands on those silver knuckles. She sighed. Must be nice to be flush. She waved a dismissive hand. Anyway, he's working with someone internationally. You won't find items like that here. High-level items are dropped from high-level enemies. So, she craned her head forward, then cocked it back. You know, if you hadn't mentioned money laundering, it might not have occurred to me. But if this guy is working with someone to sell stuff here in River City, it could be a crime family is behind it. She had my rapt attention then. How so? Take the Martinos, for instance. If they wanted to move money around to keep illegal transactions from being traced, they might buy up items like these on the international auction house. She cocked an eyebrow. With me so far? I nodded. I'm listening. So they could buy up the items for cheap from overseas, then list them in River City where the only people who could afford them are their partners. The partner buys up their inventory at a huge profit. Because the auction house is a great way to sell stuff without getting attention from nosy lieutenants of other families on the streets, then the go-between delivers the real items. In this case, the dust you asked about. Holy fucking shit. So, if a non-human crime family wanted to traffic in dust, and the Antonellis owned the market in River City, in their district, the dust market is wide and deep here. I nodded. Right. But if the Antonellis didn't want to be seen dealing with, let's say, goblins, they could sell them items at any kiosk, collect their money in private via the interface, then have the talons deliver the dust. It's not the items sold at auction anyone is interested in. It's the dust. And this way, those nosy folks you mentioned, including the cops, would have no cash exchanging hands to witness. Yeah? Tansy tapped her nose, and I wondered how an NPC knew the gesture. Probably player influence. Yep, bingo. I'll bet that's it. I nodded. Well, fucking A. I patted her back, then scanned the listing. My encouragement soon faded as a prevailing thought kept recurring. Now how do I prove any of it, even less connected to the Antonellis? I almost grinned when the answer came to me. It wasn't that the thought was actually funny. It was fucking ironic. But the only way I'd gather evidence and prove any of it was by doing the thing that got me into the shit in the first place the thing I'd been trained by the military to do, and the skill the feds had jumped on when the mob resurfaced and they needed a spy. Infiltrate. The End. You have been listening to Mafioso Online, a lit RPG by Arlo Adams and Heather Hallow, performed by Antoni AI. This has been a Layer 2 publishing production, all rights reserved. Hello, dear listeners. Arlo Adams here. I hope you enjoyed Mafioso Online Book 1. If you'd like to continue the journey, I'm releasing chapters twice per week on my Patreon page for fans of my work to enjoy. You can sign up at patreon.com forward slash Arlo Adams to support Heather and I, as we continue to produce more content for this series, and you'll only pay one-third of what you would on an audiobook or audible credit by doing so. Thanks for listening.